Welcome back, all you fabric and their flashbacks, to the super, not funny show reviews. The super not funny show reviews, where we review uh, all kinds of pop culture things. And today, we're going to be talking about the legend of Vox Machina, coming to you from Amazon Prime. And they just dropped episodes one through three, and uh, we're going to get into that. So, was it good? Was it bad? And should you be watching? The Legend of Vox Machina. That's this is a um, this is an animated project coming to you from Amazon Prime, and it's based on the Critical Role uh, podcast. Which, of course, Critical Role. This is uh, as I don't know, Lottie. I'm not as sure if you you were aware of it, but it's a D and D podcast. Uh, it's in you know out of L.A. and there's these uh, voice actors and actors, and they play D and D together. But would you believe it that within Hollywood? There actually is like a secret or not so secret, uh, you know, contingent of nerds who are getting around each other and playing D and D. So this got very popular, and so uh, it became a comic book, and now it is an animated feature. And uh, so that's what we're we're looking at: the Legend of Vox Machina, a motley crew of you know your stereotypical Dungeons and Dragons adventurers. And uh, we get to see all the hijinks they get up to in the first three episodes. So, Lottie, um, I know you've you know you've been known to roll the d twenty every now and then, <laughs> right? Yep. Yep. Um, and so we you had a chance to watch these first three episodes. First of all, you know what are they getting up to? And second of all, what's what's your thoughts about it? Let me tell you something, Rob. This is probably, like, honestly, I have been watching uh, other, like, people on YouTube play, like, uh, D&D and play Pathfinder. They're called, like, Vika something. Vika something. I'll tell you the name after this. But, um, yeah, I, well, this is one of the things that is just, it's like, I'm happy to see that more and more people are getting into, like, what D&D is or Pathfinder. Not everything has to be you have to pick a pick pick up a controller and play like pathfinder and dnd is a is not just a good like you know fantasy gathering it's a good social because let's be honest man let's just be honest how much do we as people get together nowadays to just sit down and just talk and one of the beautiful things about dnd it does that it allows you to sit down and talk to each other you know what I mean? It, it doesn't even have to be in person. It could just be on Zoom or over the phone. You know right. what I mean? And it's and to see that they turned this into a TV show of all things. Oh man, that's amazing. One of the honestly, one of the best things I've seen. Like, you know, I know it's the beginning of 2022, so I can't say, oh, it's the best thing I've seen this year. Of course it is. It's only been like a, a few weeks, but it's like this is one of the best shows I've seen in a while. And I don't mean like, oh, I don't like the superhero shows, but this is like creative and new because I know because I played Pathfinder, we're going on an actual adventure. And as I'm watching the show, I'm like, the the dungeon master of this of this game must have been a fucking genius, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking the whole time. Because I'm just like, oh, he must have rolled a one right there. Yeah, <laughs> I. You know oh. what? That's that's that is straight up. Like I'm watching this, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is written by someone that that plays that plays a tabletop R and R P R P G." Because I'm not I'm not kidding. I was watching this. I, I was like, I was like, "Oh shit, transform self. Oh shit, oh shit, heal, bless." And I was like, I was calling all of the the spells that were being being cast. I I just couldn't believe in the first episode of this show. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> excuse me, it. This is such a D and D. This is such a, a, a role playing game story because it literally starts in a tavern, and I was like, "You can't! You literally can't not can't do it. You up. can't start the uh, start a campaign if it don't start in a, a tavern. That's just yep. uh, it. Just is, uh, and it starts with a bar brawl. And but it start and, and it this show is hilarious. This show is fucking hilarious. I I was laughing, and a lot of it is 
it's poking fun at the conventions of, of the genre and of, of D&D. And, but it also is just like the cast of characters are so, they're just so, I don't want to say ridiculous, they're so well realized um, in such a way that I know for sure that each of these characters was not just, you know, written by, you know, a group of writers. They were developed by people playing this game. Every yeah. one of these characters is a they they have a personality that's distinct, you know, that feels real. Everything they do feels real. Everything they say feels like it's consistent with what they should they would say and you know. And then the way they act in combat, I it really feels like for real, we are watching, you know, someone's imagination as they are playing at the table. And I fucking yeah. love, I love this. Yeah, I mean, the first second you saw you saw that thing come out of the shadows, and it was a dragon, or what the what? I don't know what you thought, but I was like, "Ooh, you motherfuckers are dead." <laughs> that was the first. As soon as I saw a dragon, I was like, "Oh, oh shit! It's not just a dragon. It's a fully adult. Oh, it's not even an adult dragon. It might even be an old dragon. Oh, y'all are dead." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was. This like scratched the itch. You know, it really yeah. scratches that itch, I think. Yeah. Um, what do you so as far as their character, you know, what's your what's your character that I think that you connect with the most and like, you know, the ones that you like the most. Or not the one you like the most. What do you think that that, you know, really kind of embody the whole spirit of playing, you know, D and D? I I really like the uh the two characters that I, I enjoyed of course were of course, characters like of that of roles that I played, you know, I played as a barbarian before. So, <laughs> th- so to see him go like, yeah, I'm like, that's exactly yeah, how I was saying. Like, remember, fuck he was, this. I'm gonna fuck wait, this shit up. Here, here, was, here was the part, I, and I thought about you. I, I'm not kidding. I thought right about you when this moment happened, and he was like, I love to rage. I was like, oh shit. I was like, Lottie, oh my god, because I remember we when we played. And you were the barbarian, and that's literally what you. I was like, man, my dog is gonna love that. Gonna love yeah, because I always go like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. I'm telling you, I'm whooping some ass, right, and I'm taking some names. And of course, I love the ranger because I'm like, yep, that's exactly how I was when I played as my ranger, sitting back, sniping, doing support. Like I said, it was. All the characters you gotta, you have a paladin that that is well, she, obviously I, I an atheist. A, I think, I think she, <laughs> no, I don't think she's a paladin. I, I think she's a what's what's the other one? Oh, a, a cleric. Uh, a she's cleric. a cleric. Yeah, My bad. she's a cleric that's an atheist. This fucking well, hilarious. I don't, I don't even know that. She's just like losing her faith. That's why she's not a very good cleric. She's sort of her okay. faith is wavering. I I like Sc- Scanlan. That motherfucking. You know, let you know he's just like a a pansexual all over the place, you know, rock star fucking known bar. <laughs> that guy is he is the best. That dude is the best. Uh the I forget the, the, the guy the guy the gunslinger. The, the third oh, the, damn. yeah the third ep- I don't remember his name. Uh, let me find it. I, his name. Um, but the third episode. Oh yeah. I'm just like, what is going on with this dude? There's, you know what? There's a, you know, there's another vibe I get from this, this, this show, and it's very much uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, in the yeah. sen- in the sense that the people, you know, the the people in Tal Doriel that that are in that are in uh, Tal Doriel, ah, oh, sorry, I'm saying it wrong, Tal Dore, who are in charge, sort of look at them the same way that you know the Guardians were looked at, uh, you know, in Guardians of the Galaxy one. They were just kind of like looking down their noses at them. And so I I have to say this first these first 3 episodes they are extremely well done. And I and I mean I'm trying to I'm, I'm being a little, you know, circumspect here. I don't want to give everything away, but it I cannot believe how much breadth of the D&D experience it covers. You know, it's con- combat and you know tracking things down but then there's a little bit of social interaction with you know with the dinner and all that there's intrigue there's backstory like there's so much shit going on in, within this and of course there's the you know the hero turning parts where they're not just mercenaries they decide to actually be 
give a fuck and be heroes. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it, except it just perfectly distills what's so great about, you know, uh, what's so great about tabletop role-playing games. Like, yep. to, to the T. Um, yeah, I, the, the, the amount of, like I said, the amount of like, like care and action, I mean, care that went into this show, you could just, like I said, if you played Pathfinder D and D, you can see obviously where, oh yeah, they made a bad role. Like the part, you know, there was a part with the show where the guy was trying to hide and he just stood there and I was like, yeah, he wrote a one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, yep. Yep. That looks like a critical fail to me. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's, and I can almost, I can almost hear the D, the DM, you know, going, oh, you know, you're getting a weird, you know, you're getting a weird uh, feeling in that dragon sense of yours. And I'm just <laughs> like, yes, I'm, because he's, you know, I can almost hear the DM giving these clues, and then the person be like, oh, I've got a, I've got a weird tingling in my spider scent, you know, in my, in my dragon scent, and, you know, it. It really does play very much like that, and it's all to the yep. good. I, I really think that as, as an overall, you know, as an overall entertainment product, it's nothing lacking here. You know, great characters. The story is good. It's pretty easy to follow. It's got some intrigue, got some you know some hooks to sort of like uh, some threads to kind of follow along. There's a good cliffhanger at the third end of the third episode that makes you be like, I can't wait to the next episode, right? Yeah. All, all of that fun stuff. And you definitely you can definitely see that these guys are gonna level up and, and be more badass. And can I be honest? I don't think any of them suck. <laughs> like no. none of them I like all of the characters. And I want to know some more about them. Um and this yeah, is just a really yeah, it's just a ripe setting for more adventures and stuff like that. So just the writers, writers are doing their thing. The animation is pretty great, considering I know the budget is probably not awesome. Uh, but all things considered, they do a pretty great job of rendering, you know, these fantastical things. Uh, and honestly, I, go ahead. I'm gonna be honest. They got the perfect, the perfect group to do the animation for this show. Because let's be honest. Um, Invincible wasn't the greatest like animated show at times, but they knew where to put the budget and when and when mm -hmm. not to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and I think the, the the directing. I think we really need to call out the directing uh, on this because they make do with you know a, you know they don't have a huge budget for animation, so what they make up for it is in interesting camera angles. To make things way more dynamic, you, you notice there was a lot of twisting of that, kind of like you you ever see you know the way the camera follows Spider Man when he's twisting around the air to give you an idea of movement. There's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of yeah. changing the camera angles lower, or higher, or something like that to give it a more dynamic uh, feel. So you never, I never feel like the animation is cheap, and yeah. that's that's important. I don't feel like it's cheap. I think everyone's expressive. I think. There's very much an anime-inspired way of showing the expressions, and that's a good. That's to the good. It's one of the best things that that Western animation has borrowed from anime is getting the the overexpressiveness in the face so that it conveys emotion properly. And so there's plenty of that, um, and there's plenty of of you know when things are still making that stillness make sense within the moment. So. I just overall, I don't got anything bad to say about this show. It's hilarious. It's lot of, lots of cool action. I love the story. I love the animation. I am fucking stoked. Absolutely pumped for the next episode. I hate that I have to wait a week for it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. Um, when I as soon as the episode ended, I was like, more, more. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It. I mean, this is this is pumping. Uh, straight, you know, straight cocaine, straight heroin into the, the you know, into the veins of D and D nerds everywhere. But if you're not a D and D nerd, there's plenty of there here for you. So we love yeah. it, and uh, we hope you guys get a chance to check it out. So uh, either way, what did you guys think about the show? And what do you think about what we had to say? 
Get down to the comments. Let us know what you're thinking. Of course, you can always hit us up at supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter, and we can chop it up about the legend of Vox Machina. All right, all you Fabric in the Flesh bags, thanks for joining us on this uh, review of the Legend of Vox Machina, episodes one through three. Join us next week. We're going to review episode four. Until then, I have been Mo De Poupe, your resident fabricant and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. I will see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace. Peace.